604 with a comparison of Android 4.1.1 Jelly Bean and iOS 6. We have Jelly Bean running on the Verizon Galaxy Nexus and iOS 6 running on the Verizon iPhone 5. Let's start with lock screens. On iOS we have the slide to unlock. You can swipe up on this camera icon to access um, the camera app. You can double tap to get access to music controls. And you can hold down the home button to get access to the voice assistant. Which in iOS is Siri. A lock screen of Jelly Bean. You can slide to the right to unlock, slide to the left for the camera, or slide up for the voice assistant, assistant which on Jelly Bean is Google Now. I do not know of a way to access music controls on the Jelly Bean lock screen, but I'm not the best, I'm not that used to Jelly Bean, so there might be a way that I don't know of. And I'm not talking about like downloading widgets or anything, I'm talking about like a native way. So if we just slide to unlock both the devices, the native browser on iOS 6 is Safari, and on Android point Android 4.1.1 Jelly Bean is Google Chrome. They both have their own mail apps. Um, the ga the Galaxy Nexus, which is running Jelly Bean, has Play Music for its music app. The iPhone has the mu has just its plain music app. But it has iTunes where you download and purchase songs. You can purchase music from the Play Store in Jelly Bean. They both have native phone apps, camera apps. Jelly Bean has widgets which you can customize your screen with. Like here we have a music control widget, we have a slideshow widget, we have a clock widget. A Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and other settings widget, news and weather, just simple widgets. You can download more complex ones if you like. As you can see, Jelly Bean also has access to animated backgrounds. From using both of these devices, I was I was using the Galaxy Nexus running Jelly Bean for about a week, and I I found missing iOS because iOS just seems more smooth. Although Jelly Bean has Project Butter and everything. It still does not meet the smoothness of iOS. It's just, it's, it's, it's just the unification between the software and hardware on Apple products is just better. For maps, they have Apple, they have Apple's Maps, which is of course has been majorly criticized for not working that well. Then there's of course Google Maps, which let me find this here. Google Maps, Google Maps. There it is. So let's even them up. We're both going to turn them on standard mode. We're going to go to the same place on both one and both of them. So if we search, we're going to go to. Let's say we want to go to the Empire State Building. Empire State Building. iOS 6 maps actually got there faster, but as you can see, the Google Maps do look a little bit more detailed. Even though, I guess if you zoom in, the iOS 6 maps get more detailed, yeah. But then so do. Yeah, so I get the, the maps, the standard maps seem to work okay. Now if we go to satellite maps, I'm not quite sure, so layers, is that under that? No. Oh yeah, it was. Never mind. So yeah, if we go to satellite, and we go to satellite, Google Maps did seem to load the satellite faster. They're both on the same Wi-Fi network, by the way. So if we zoom in on the Empire State Building here, see this automatically switched to. Apple's 3D maps, if you can't tell. Well, if we scroll, zoom in on the Empire State Building here. 
Sorry, if I'm in the video, I can't really tell what I'm recording. This has standard satellite images, while Apple's maps seem to be 3D, it looks like. Which means they're renders, they're not actual pictures. Yeah. So, this is a more accurate view, because it's actual satellite images. But this is a more detailed view, because it is 3D maps, but it's not as accurate because it's a computer render as opposed to actual images of the place. So those are the maps applications on the devices. I know Google has 3D maps, I think it's in the Google Earth application, but I guess we can compare that too, so where is Google Earth? Do I even have it on the device? Yes, I do. So there we go. Let's compare Google's Earth 3D maps to Apple's. So if we go into 3D building here, See, there's the Empire State Building. No thanks. So we want to go to the Empire State Building. I'm not sure if we can use 3D maps in the default maps application. But if you can, then... I'm sorry for not showing in the video. I'm just not that familiar with Android. This will probably be the default satellite view at first. I'm just going to flip that down. Let's see, 3D buildings. Okay, 3D buildings is enabled, so there we go. Here is Google's 3D maps. As you can see, as you scroll through the city in both of them, Apple's maps do actually seem to load a bit faster as you scroll through the city. Of course, Apple's maps had... You know what? Apple's maps had a little more time to render here, so let's go to a different city so they have equal amount of time to render. Let's go to Chicago on them. Take a look at the Sears Tower. It's not the Sears Tower anymore, is it? It's, well, I want to call it the Sears Tower. Sears Tower Sears So if we go to Okay, oh well Oh, see it Google Maps got it faster, but I guess I, I must not have typed it in all the way on iOS Maps, so let's go back. Let's try. Oh, there we go. Let's go on there. Oh, it's called the Willis Tower. Okay. So if we scroll in here, 3D Maps. As you can see, Apple's Maps is loading a lot faster than on Google's Maps here for the 3D imagery. Yeah, see, this just seems more smooth, while this seems a lot more jerky. So, 3D maps seem to be better, and, and a little bit more accurate than 3D maps on... See, but right... Oh, wait, it's loading good. Yeah, it's, it's not... Well, yeah, 3D maps on iOS seems to be better than 3D maps on Google, but regular maps and... Satellite maps seem to be better on Google than they are on iOS. Let's go to the home screens now. As you can see, well, there's an example. iOS took a faster time to get... Took less time getting to the home screen than Nexus did, even though the Nexus did have apps in the background like there. Let's close out of that stuff. Okay. Next thing, voice assistants. We have Google now, and we have Siri. So, uh, we activate Google now by holding down the home button and swiping up here. What is 2 plus 2? Google now clearly got it faster than iOS. Than Siri, not iOS, I guess. Siri seems to be taking quite a while here. 
Okay. Let me think. Here's what I found. You can see, Google Now was clearly the winner there. So if we go, let's see, what can we ask it? Oh. Who is Steve Jobs? Thanks for asking about Steve. Here's Apple's web page about him. As you can see, Google Now brings up a Google search and a little card with his born death information and a picture of him and his name. While Siri read, wants you to go to um, Apple Steve Jobs memorial page. Now let's see what else can we ask it. What was the score of the Ravens game last night? narrowly defeated the Patriots by a score of 31 to 30 yesterday. Google Now did get there faster and did bring it up faster. But I kind of like the way Siri has it pictured better there, but Google Now got you the facts quicker, which I guess is what it counts. Let's see, what else can we do? What's your name? Siri didn't Perhaps even... there's something I can do for you. Well, Siri didn't even get that off. What's your name? Siri seems to be taking a while again. But as you can see, Google now doesn't have really have a name. It just brings you to a Google search of what's My your name? name? It's Siri. There Siri's go. Uh let's see. What is the best smartphone? The one you're holding. As you can see, Siri, Siri refers to itself as the best smartphone, while Google Now brings up a Google search, which has, like, the CNET best smartphones reviews article. Looks like it was written six days ago. But Google Now does seem to be faster, but Siri... Google Now is mainly strictly facts, while Siri has a, like, it can respond to different types of questions instead of just, like, a basic Google search, like Google Now. So, let's see. What else? Can, what, final, final question here for them. Let's see. What is the square root of 56? Okay, Siri didn't even get that. So, hang on, let's try that again so it's fair. Oh, wow, Siri is not even working. That's nice. <laughs> what is the square root of 56? As you can see, Google now was faster again. Apple's Siri servers might be a bit slower since the iPhone is still new and a lot of people are getting their new phones and wanting to use them. But, Siri is taking a while. As you can see, Google Now is clearly the winner in this comparison. Keep in mind, this is not ju just my Wi-Fi network here. My Wi-Fi network is like 50 megabits down, so it's not the best, but it's not. It's definitely not bad. So, as you can see, Google Now clearly do it clearly the winner. Now, with when it comes to mail applications, I prefer iOS mails because it, the unified inbox just seems to work better than the unified inbox on Google Mail. But yeah, I don't. I haven't set it up yet because I recently restored the phone um, the week when I was running it on Jelly Bean. I had a custom ROM, but Verizon recently released the official Jelly Bean ROM for the Nexus, which so I restored it. So I don't have any my information on it anymore. But I'm not going to open my mail application because it has all my email in them. I don't really want you guys reading my email. But, yeah. As for, like, online, I guess not online, but on-device credit cards, debit cards, and, and gift cards, you have Passbook on iOS. These are not real things, by the way. These are things I downloaded that are fake pass, pass thing items. Like, here's a generic coffee shop one. 
Then we have Target. I think I have an Apple Store gift card somewhere here. Yeah, Apple Store gift card. Those aren't real, by the way. If we unlock this here, go back to... Where's Google Wallet? Alright. The Nexus doesn't... The Verizon Nexus, I don't think, even has Google Wallet. I think I read an article that it was... That no longer works on the Nexus... On the Verizon Nexus for some reason. So that's a little disappointing. Now, there's the Notification Center in iOS, which has, like, a weather widget, a stock widget, tap to tweet, so it has Twitter and Facebook integration, while this looks like it has weather, then it has the time, and it has, and can it, they both can have notifications here. Clearing out notifications in the Android Notification Center is easier because you can just swipe them, while iOS, you have to, like, pr press clear, then press X, but... Android does not seem to have Facebook and Twitter integration that I know of. Might be. Well, we go into settings here. Where's settings? Well, I'm not going to bother with that. But between the two operating systems, they are both good operating systems, and I would say I'm not going to recommend one over the other. I say it's it should be just purely personal preference. iOS is smoother and has a larger app market. It's simpler and easier to use, but Jelly Bean is more customizable. You can easily, pretty much any Android device can be rooted, and you can install custom ROMs, and all sorts of stuff, all different themes. You can install themes without rooting your phone, while on iOS you have to jailbreak your phone to install themes, and also a jailbreak takes a lot longer to come out on iOS than a root does on Android. But yeah, I would say leave it up to personal preference. Uh, iOS is a much more lockdown platform, while Android is a more open open platform because well, it's open source. I I personally prefer iOS, but I would say leave it up leave it up to you. They are both good operating systems, and I would recommend both of them. Now, older Android operating operating systems like Gingerbread, I would not recommend, but I haven't really used Ice Cream Sandwich because as soon as I got my Nexus, I upgraded to Jelly Bean. But between Jelly Bean and iOS 6, I'd say they're both good operating systems, purely personal preference. So, have fun choosing between the different devices. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe.